Hi everyone and welcome to the next session of the IOTD that is image of the day. I hope by now all of you know it's over a week so all of you know that this is a daily ritual of 10 p.m. where in less than five minutes we discuss an image or a set of images. I'm Dr. Preeti Sharma and I'm your pathology educator on the platform of Unacademy. Guys, this ritual today, if you if you were following, we had been doing hemat hematology since the past couple of few days. We've done the erythropoiesis, that is the RBC series yesterday. Before that, we did myelopoiesis, that was the WBC series. So, no points for guessing. Today, what is the cell that we are going to talk about? The other, the third cell of the hematology that is left, that is the platelet. So we will be talking about platelet but not about the mature platelet, we will be talking about a precursor from which the platelet develops and that is the image that is shown to you today. So what is this huge multinucleated cell? This huge multinucleated cell is a megakaryocyte. Now, if this is, a so as the word tells you, mega, it's obviously big in size, although the size is not very important for you to know, but it is 50 to 150 microns. I'm just giving you a reference so that you know it's much bigger than all the other cells that you deal with. One more very interesting thing is that it looks like, how many do you think it has a single nucleus or it has multiple nuclei? It looks as if, why am I using this word? It looks as if it has multiple nuclei, which is very, very important. I want all of you to know a phenomena which the megakaryocyte exhibits and that is known as endomitosis. So, actually, when I say, just listen to me very carefully, when I say something is a giant cell, you will say that, okay, there were 5, 6 or 10, 12 cells. When all of them fused together, they ended up in the formation of a giant cell. So, don't you call it as a multinucleated giant cell? That is the concept, right? That is multiple nuclei came together and they fused to form a giant cell. So, then you will say that ma'am, megakaryocyte also looks like a giant cell. But is it a true giant cell? No, it's not a true giant cell. It exhibits something called endomitosis means... One nucleus, if this was one nucleus, it divides into another, it divides into another, it divides into another. So, can it show polyploidy? Yes, it's division of the nuclei. Are there many cells fusing? No. They are constantly, only the nuclei are dividing. The cytoplasm, the cell is not able to divide. So, only, only the nucleus keeps on dividing. So, that is the concept of endomitosis which a megakaryocyte actually shows you. So, this is more or less put under a category category of a giant cell but that's a very interesting different phenomena which it shows from the others. Point number two is where is it located in a bone marrow. So the location whenever I say where is it located the location is referred to as the topography. So if someone asks you what is the topography of a megakaryocyte you'll say the topography is perisinusoidal means what? Can you all appreciate this is the bone marrow and this is something over here which is showing you lots of red blood cells. So if this is showing you lots of red blood cells, it's obviously a sinusoid of the bone marrow. And where are the megakaryocytes located? They are just located around the sinusoid. So what's the location? Perisinusoidal in location. Coming to the next, what are the markers of a megakaryocyte? Markers of a megakaryocyte and the same markers that I am telling you for a megakaryocyte will also corroborate with the markers that you will study for a mature platelet. So remember, it is CD41, 42 and 61. 41, 42 and 61 are the markers of megakaryocyte. So what have I got out here? I have got you, what is this known as? Which technique? It's a flow cytometry. It's a flow cytometry and all the cells are lying in this quadrant. What is this quadrant? If I trace it down to the x-axis, it's got a positive expression of CD61. If I trace these cells on the y-axis, they've got a positive expression for CD41. So both 41 and 61 are coming out to be positive. Are these megakaryocytes? Yes, this is a normal megakaryocyte or a platelet. Versus, look at the next one. Majority of the cells are sitting in this quadrant. Are they positive for 41? No, they are looking on the lower side. So, 41, negative. Are they looking positive for 61? Not again, they are looking negative for 61 also. 
So if I say that they are definitely platelets, but they are not exhibiting 41, they are not exhibiting 61, can you think of any disorder which comes to your mind? Maybe I can tell you the other names. 41 is known as GP2B and 61 is known as GP3A. So I am basically saying 2B and 3A are absent. That's the other name. So I hope by now you know that we are talking about a disorder that is Glanzmann thrombesthenia. It's a bleeding disorder where we always study that there is absence of 41 and 61. So, coming to the quick revision of the day, what is megakaryocyte? It's a precursor of the platelet having a size of 50 to 150 micron. It exhibits endomitosis. It gives rise to platelets. The normal location of or the topography of a megakaryocyte is around the sinusoids, that is perisinusoidal. Markers are 41, 42 and 61. So, normal megakaryocytes and platelets will be positive for these. If the platelets do not have 41 and 61, that is GP2B and 3A, that disease is known as Glanzmann thrombesthenia. Well, in continuation with this, tomorrow the ninth IOTD that I will be talking about will be disorders related to megakaryocytes. So you guys need to do a little bit of a homework and come for tomorrow. So you need to tell me where do you see one 2, 3 and 4. That's your homework for tomorrow. You're going to tell me where are these 4 different variations of a megakaryocyte seen in which particular disorder and then we'll talk about these with beautiful mnemonics in tomorrow's class again at 10 o'clock. Thanks for joining this IOTD of the day and for the students who are appearing for the exam, that is the list of grand tests which are available on the platform every Saturday and on Saturdays the timing is 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. So remember, just keep a reminder for every Saturday 9 a.m. It's a GT and obviously the scores of the grand test are, will obviously help you analyze your performance. And for the plus students, these are the different courses that have been launched, the different subscription plans that are available. And yes, there are uh, schedules which are going on for NEAT PG, for NEXT students and there's a pathology batch that is starting on August 19th. This August 19th batch is going to be almost 118 hours of pathology but so you don't get burdened too much. Every alternate day, every alternate day, just two hours. So this will go on for approximately three, three and a half months. But every alternate day, just two hours of pathology that you have to study and you'll completely ace the subject by the end of three months. So obviously this is for students who are either in second, third, fourth year or who are targeting the next year exams where you have time to study something in detail. Yes, that's what's being planned for you. Anyway, thank you all so much for joining in. I'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully you will be done with your homework also and we'll discuss more of megakaryocyte in terms of the pathology. Thank you and good night.